The goal for this video is to understand the Yelp API and the data we get back. I'll also show you how to create an API key, which we'll need in order to make requests to Yelp. Once we have this, we'll start coding in the next video. So let me start with an API. API stands for Application Programming Interface, and it defines how software apps communicate with each other. So in this case, Yelp is providing an API to us, and we're considered the client of the API in order to access data. The mobile app that we're building is considered a client, and we're making a request to the Yelp server. We're asking, I want to search for restaurants in New York that serve avocado toast. And the Yelp server will respond over the internet with a list of restaurants that match our search criteria. And we can do whatever we want with that data. In our case, all we're doing is we're rendering it in a list. So fundamental to APIs are data. APIs are contracts that define how we get, create, modify, or delete data. And the way that we send data back and forth is through something called JSON. JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation, but it doesn't actually have anything to do with the language of JavaScript in particular. JSON is a standard way to transmit data. It's easy for machines and humans to read and write, which is a benefit because easy for humans to read and write means that we can look at it in the browser or in a text editor and be able to understand what it means. The second thing to understand about JSON is that it consists of two fundamental structures, objects and arrays. An object is an unordered set of key value pairs and it's denoted by curly braces. Each key is a string followed by a colon, and the value can be a string, number, true or false, or another object or array. An array is an ordered collection of values. And again, the values could be anything. An array is denoted by square brackets. And this will make more sense once we actually look at example data from the Yelp API in a little bit. But going back to this slide, which shows the diagram, architecture diagram, the reason why JSON is important is because APIs, like pretty much anything with software, there can't be any ambiguity. So it's really important to understand how to read the structure of JSON and format the data that you're dealing with so that the data you send to the server or receive from the server can be parsed and displayed properly. Now that we have an understanding of APIs and JSON, let's take a look at the Yelp API, which will power our application. So go to yelp.com slash developers, sign in if you haven't signed in, just because you'll need that in order to create an app for the Yelp API. Uh, we'll get to that later. But Yelp Fusion is a name of the API or product that we're going to use to get data out of Yelp. So tap on that link and then go down and tap on documentation so we can learn more about how to use Yelp Fusion. So APIs generally consist of a large number of endpoints, each of which has the ability to do some operation on the data. So traditionally with APIs, you can do things like get, create, modify, or delete. Sometimes that's abbreviated as CRUD, create, read, update, or delete. Those are the four common operations. For the purposes of our app, the only thing that we want to do or will be able to do is read data. Each of these has a corresponding HTTP verb. And for that, it's called get. We're going to be doing get requests on the Yelp API in order to get data out. In particular, what we're going to do is use the search endpoint from this category, businesses endpoint, and do get requests. So here you can see that's the verb. And the way APIs typically work is that there's a base URL. In this case, the base URL is https colon slash slash api.yelp.com slash v3. So presumably v3 is the version of the API. There's usually a versioning scheme behind every API. After the base URL, you append the endpoint. So the endpoint here is businesses slash search. So this is the request we're going to make. We're going to make a get request on this URL. Along with the URL, you also need to pass in certain parameters. For this endpoint, we're going to pass in a, something called a term, which is of type string. And it says it's optional, but this is a search term, for example, food or restaurants. In our example, we're going to be passing an avocado toast here. And one more parameter that we're going to provide is location. Again, the type of this is a string. Because we're not going to be passing in a latitude and longitude, location will be required. And we're going to be passing in New York. And then you can read more about other parameters that you could pass in. For example, if you want a particular category of business or restaurant, you could do that. If you want to limit the number of businesses that you get back, open now as a filter, and so on. So there's a lot of power in this API. 
we're going to have something which only utilizes the first two parameters, but there's a lot more here that you can see. So if we scroll down, we can actually see a sample response body. So once you make a successful request to the API, it will send back JSON data, which we just talked about, and it's formatted like this. So you can see that what we're getting back is a JSON object, and the way we're able to identify that is because it has curly braces here. And JSON object consists of key value pairs. So the first key value pair has a key of total, and the value is 8,228. And the second key value pair has a key of businesses, and the value is a JSON list. And the JSON list consists of a bunch of different JSON objects. So here, for example, is one object. This is the end of the object. And then the JSON list consists of more of these. This JSON object is a representation of one business or one restaurant on Yelp. And it has these various attributes, such as rating, price, phone number. Uh, and we're going to parse out and use a lot of these when building our app. The summary of what we're getting back is a JSON object with three key values, total, businesses, and region. And each of them has corresponding data. The only one that we'll really be interested in is the data that we get back from the business's key. And you can, again, read more about how this data is structured and the type of that data, whether it's a string or an object or a decimal um, in the documentation. What I'd encourage you to do is spend a few extra minutes right now to read through a bit more of the documentation. You can see some of the other functionality that the Yelp Fusion API provides. For example, being able to look up a business by phone number or getting the details of a particular business. So similar to reading G JSON data, like the example that we went through here, reading JSON is a skill and reading API docs itself is a skill. And that's something that you should develop over time. And one more thing worth mentioning is the requirements that Yelp has when anyone uses their API, which is that attribution to Yelp should be very obvious. And also Yelp has branding requirements. For example, the star rating for every business should come from Yelp. Like those assets to show the rating should come from Yelp. So strictly speaking, our dummy app, the Yelp clone, won't follow those guidelines. But these are things that are, again, all documented in the API. Finally, most APIs, including the Yelp API, has some way to monitor the number of requests coming from a particular developer. The way they do that is through something called an API key. And different APIs have different ways of doing this. But the Yelp Fusion API is pretty simple, actually, in this regard, because all you need to do is create an app in order to obtain a private API key, which we'll do next. And every AP, API call you make to the Yelp API has to include the API key. Some APIs you'll see will use something called OAuth, which is a bit more complicated. It's effectively a handshake between the client and server. Uh, but for Yelp, it's pretty straightforward. We're going to follow the steps here. Let's create an app. And this is going to require us to fill out certain information. And then once we create the app, we'll be able to get our API key. Through the magic of video, I filled out the fields here. And you can now tap on Create New App in order to get your API key. So now I've created my new app. Keep note of this API key, because we're going to be using this in our client code. Now that we have an understanding of APIs, JSON, and in particular, how the Yelp API works, in the next video, we're going to use this information in order to make a request and get a response from the API.